um, Minneapolis, which is this band's hometown. So that'd be fun for them. But boy, does this singer talk a lot. I don't know oh, who yeah, the singer is now. After the Burial is a band that's had a lot of lineup changes over the years. Just when they were kind of coming up, like their guitar player committed suicide, something like that. This dude was talking in between every song. You know, over the pandemic, I realized, okay, bro, we all were quarantined and, you know. Boy, he was talking a lot. Now, I think, I don't know, maybe it's because you're screaming through all your songs and you got to catch your breath in between. There are plenty of bands that sound like that. They're not doing all that talking. So I don't know. Maybe they were maybe they were excited. I, maybe it was just excitement. I don't know. But the other guys in the band were like, let's, let's play, man. You know, we're, we're in an opening slot here. We only get, you know, maybe 40 minutes or whatever. They were good, but the dude was talking a lot. A lot of opportunities because I was kind of posted up along the wall on the main floor because it was a sold-out show, and I missed the first band, so by the time I got there, the pickings were slim. And I don't want to stand. I'm not one of those people that stands in front of someone, you know. Um, so I kind of posted up against the wall there near the main bar and the main floor. So I still had a pretty good eye line. But this dude gave me a lot of opportunities to walk uh, back and get a, get a drink. Chatting everybody up. So maybe it's just excitement. I don't know. This Saturday night, another episode of Two Hours to Midnight. It's our weekly metal show. I'm your host along with Corey Roddick and Pat Butler. It is two hours of nothing but metal, all different kinds, stuff you guys request, local bands that we'll play for you. So if you're in a local band, you want to submit your stuff, make sure it's clean for air. Can't believe I have to tell people that, but I do. Make sure it's clean for air, and uh, maybe it'll get on. Local music from Assault and uh, Vadiat this weekend, a couple of local bands. And then just other stuff that uh, we dig and want to play. So you'll see the playlists on the 2 Hours to Midnight Facebook page or at WMMS.com. It is only a live show. There's no podcast version of it. So 10 to midnight on Saturdays. Hopefully there's not going to be any goddamn Guardians rain delay or anything like that. (laughs) That has jammed us up more than a few times. And the way these guys are playing, I'd hate to get uh, preempted. For a Guardians game. But Saturday night, it's a 6-10 pitch here at home. So let's hope they're all done by 10 o'clock so we can get to something good. They're, play, they're, getting, the, they're getting the pants beat off them around the corner by the Tigers again. Yeah. Five to nothing in the top of the sixth. They won last night, though. They, they can't get anything going against these Tigers. They won last night. Two to nothing. They won. Okay. <laughs> Win's a win. <laughs> Yeah, I know a win's a win, but I mean, if you're on the team, you're Tito. You're, he's like, yeah, there's no partying in the in the, right. in the locker room these days. Yeah, we know. Better not be. Anywho, and listen, but Tigers on my wife's team. She's happy, but five to nothing. Come on, man. Anyway, Guardians um, doing that now. Off tomorrow. Still at home for this weekend. They'll play the Angels of Anaheim. If you're an Angels fan. And quite frankly, why wouldn't you be? Mm. I mean, they're okay right now. Shohei Otani. Yeah, number Mike two in the West. Trout. Yep. It's a good team. That's right. They are a good team right now. They started off not doing great, but now they're they're getting it together. Listen, you know, when you're paying that kind of money, when you're getting the, literally these heavy hitters, these guys that can just go out there and do anything, you want to make sure that they're doing what you pay them to do. Hey, listen. Some of you aren't even old enough to remember this. Pound cake's probably not. There used to be something called MTV News. Oh, yeah, I remember that. In the early days of MTV, they got a guy named Kurt Loder, who by comparatively to the other people on MTV, he was like the old guy. I think he was 39. But he was supposed to lend them some gravitas. He was a longtime columnist for Rolling Stone. He was a music author and critic. I don't know if the guy could actually play a note. It was one of those things, though, when Kurt Loder showed up, your butthole clenched a little bit because you're like, okay, who died? What band broke up? You were worried. What's, what's Yeah, he, he showed up a lot of times with bad news. He was the guy that told us that Kurt Cobain died. Yeah. Famously mm-hmm. on April 8th, 1994. 
Hi, I'm Kurt Loder with an MTV News special report on a very sad day. Kurt Cobain, the leader of one of rock's most gifted and promising bands, Nirvana, is dead. And this is the story as we know it so far. Cobain's body was found in a house in Seattle on Friday morning. He was dead of an apparently self-inflicted shotgun blast to the head. Police found what is said to be a suicide note at the scene, but have not yet divulged its contents. Cobain, who was 27, had reportedly been missing for about six days, according to his mother. Yeah. Uh, at that time, Kurt Loder would have been about 49 years old. He is 78 years old right now. Uh, looks every minute of it. But he was like the main guy over there on MTV News. And then they would bring other people in who kind of made their name. They had a woman named Tabitha Soren. Do you remember her? Oh, yeah. I remember that. Uh, they had, um, oh, God, who was the other girl that got to be a big deal? Allison somebody. She went to like go work for PBS or something like that. But some people really made their bones with MTV News as kind of a, a counterbalance for everything that was going on. But you may have read the stories about how all of these streaming companies and these media companies are just slashing workforce because they're like, ooh, we've got to save some money. And that always comes in the form of firing people. And MTV is part of the Paramount umbrella. And so to slash part of their U.S. workforce – they have completely shuttered MTV News. Um, that That is, they're cutting their U.S. workforce by 25%. And so one out of every four people over there, Paramount's getting fired. And so the entire MTV News division. Now, I haven't watched MTV since Jersey Shore. But MTV has not been a home to music videos for a long time. I will uh, admit to complete ignorance that e MTV News even still existed. Yeah, I had no idea. I thought MTV News went away in like when the countdown show went away, like yeah. around then when they were just completely giving up on being a music channel. I was going to say, do you think that was a part of their demise? PRL. Because when they stopped playing music, like I, I used to watch, the, I think the last uh, couple years I was in high school was the last couple years that they stopped playing music. Because um, I used to watch them every morning when I would get up for school, and that was the only time they ever played like music. Well, yeah, before. because it's not like MTV News became news about reality shows. Mm -hmm. MTV News was music news, and so if you're not playing music videos, who cares? Because back then they have MTV News, they had The Week in Rock, they had all of these things that were under that umbrella, and so that's being completely done away with. Uh, Kurt Loder hasn't been with MTV in a long, long time. Oh, but they are going away. That was the intro. Yeah. You hear that? You go, Ugh. Oh, hey, there's going to be some news coming. I'm going to learn something What's here. What's going on with Michael Jackson Lord, now? This is MTV News. For the first time since Wham! Tour. Bruce Springsteen's getting remarried. Mm -hmm. What? Here three years ago, George Michael would be playing outdoor stadiums in the U.S. on the just. That's what constituted music news. Michael, J Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee, George Michael will be playing. Imagine if you had told Kurt Loder in 1988, someday George Michael will be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I think that would... He would, have had a, he would have had a Bill O'Reilly-style meltdown right there live on MTV News. He would have flipped out. Just announced final leg of his current tour. These are the October dates. And as you can see, with the exception of the Summit Arena in Houston, all the shows are at 50,000 plus. I don't know what stadiums. that means to play Meanwhile, us out. Michael's monkey single has just arrived at the top of the Billboard chart, putting him in the rarefied company of Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston. Monkey single? What's monkey single? Hmm. What is that? What's monkey single? Just mon monkey si single. Oh, the song monkey. Oh, hey, yo, yeah. monkey. Yeah. I got it. Okay. I thought monkey single was something. The only other performers to score four number one singles from the same album. That's the news for now. Stay tuned for more music on MTV. MTV News. You hear it first. They did that wiki, 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 which was from Aerosmith and Run DMC's Walk This Way. But they also had another version that used Megadeth in it. And MTV was really slick, boy. They'd say, you hear it. And then they had the bass line from a Megadeth mm -hmm. song called Peace Sells But Who's Buying? Here we go, doon, do doon, do doon. Remember that? Yeah. You hear it, doon, do doon first. And Dave Mustaine said over the years, he goes, we never got a penny for, for that, that from MTV because they stopped the riff right before one they'd have to second pay. Yeah, before they, they'd have to they pay They know them. what they're doing. That is really 
Oh man, it's well, it's legal. Uh, it's that's fair use. Pretty clever. It's fair use. But that's one of those things. It's that, also pretty scummy too. It is, I mean, it is scummy, but they know it, what they're I mean, doing. But also, did it help people become aware of that? No. Maybe of Megadeth. Yeah. No, you either knew about, if you weren't watching Hey Bangers Ball, you weren't paying attention to Megadeth from right. the MTV News. It wasn't like you could go back then and Google what's the baseline from in the MTV News outro. But <laughs> anyway, MTV News, which none of us even knew was still around, is now not. So update your calendars accordingly. If you listen on iHeartRadio, uh, tell me where you do it. If you're out of state, let me know. Uh, Jessica listens in Manhattan. She's in Hell's Kitchen. Sean is in Indianapolis. Uh, Dan listens in Burgettstown, Pennsylvania, out by Starlight Amphitheater. Tim's in Grand Rapids. And Derek is in Houston, Mississippi. Hey, gang. Uh, listening to the show yesterday, I had to laugh at the uh, baby uncle uh, <laughs> statement. I am a father of three adult children and oops had a fourth uh just a year ago and i also have a grandchild so my grandkid calls his uncle baby uncle nice oops uh, yeah yeah Uh uh-huh oops baby uncle it's real real life stuff boy imagine that you got grown kids you go oh well okay I mean, your kids have a gap, but it's not that egregious. Once you yeah, got a I mean, baby kid, uncle, that's when things get wild. Baby uncle. <laughs> <laughs> things get wild with baby uncle. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hey, Gaylord. Hi. Audience wants me to do a Gaylord moratorium that. because his uh, his uh, cadence is so stilted. But I like talking to Gaylord. <laughs> oh, well, I like. Uh, I actually, I love talking to you guys. Oh, I know. Uh, Mr. Cox, I wanted to ask you a question. If you had ever heard of the the group Rare Earth. Yeah, from uh, Detroit, Michigan. Right. Yeah. And I had taken drum lessons from the drummer, Peter Rivera. Oh, good and for you. Cheetah Rivera, the old dancer? <laughs> yeah. You took drum lessons no, from I Cheetah was... Rivera? Wow. She's like 90, isn't she? Uh, well, no. Peter, uh, he uh, <laughs> is still kicking and not doing to like about uh, Gaylord? a lot. <laughs> Go What's ahead. That? Go ahead. I'm listening. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, he is uh, still kicking and doing a lot of music, and his voice is great, yep. and his drum style is fantastic. Now, I know it's not the um, heavy metal or the music that you play. Gaylord, I hope Sunday. this isn't all building up to ask me to play Rare Earth on Two Hours to Midnight, because I reject that on principle. I will... I will not compromise. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I I just asked if you had ever heard of them, and yes. if you had ever the uh, they got the um, rare uh, earth got the name rare earth got the name drop in the revolution will not be televised. Remember the revolution will not be televised. Mm, the Gil yeah. Scott Heron. The revolution will not be televised. It will not be. You know, back in the seventies, he named dropped Rare Earth as uh, some. I guess I don't know if you didn't like him or what, but uh, it's all a deep dive, uh, Gaylord. We've just lost forty well, percent of the audience. Drum solo, the drum solo that uh, Peter Rivera did on Get Ready was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, other drummers nowadays uh, do a lot more. But uh, I just wondered what your thoughts were on different styles of music. Apparently, you have a very phenomenal education in music. You have to be when you're in your job. But Apparently, you've hey, never heard Pound Cake's musical knowledge before. You don't have to have that. Well, I just he's a, he's a great guy. 
but oh, he makes me laugh when you two get going. Uh, That's what he's here I for, just Galen. Love him. <laughs> and he's he's a good friend of mine. I really like him. But you guys all all are my family. And oh, Bill, boy. I oh. want to come to one of your shows and introduce myself. Okay, uh, I got I got you, coming can up. You, can you carve out an hour, Bill? Yeah, I got uh, I got plenty of time. What else? What else am I okay, doing? there you go. Oh yeah, I got some shows. You're out west, though, right? You're out near. He's in Wellington. Wellington, yeah. So. Wellington, and Close. I would love to be able to see you, sir. Well, I don't have anything out that way right now, but I do get out to some of those places out that way uh, occasionally. So I will let you know when I have something out uh, west like that. Thank you, Gaylord. I got to move on here, pal, but uh, thanks. This is uh, his drum teacher from Rare Earth. Uh, I don't know if this constitutes solo, but I mean, he's got some accompaniment there, but uh, there you go. I think most people remember I Just Want to Celebrate from Rare Earth. But uh, other than that, uh, boy, what a what a deep deep dive there from Gaylord, Rare Earth. You know, I was thinking I like talking to Gaylord, and then about thirty seconds in, I'm like, mm. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I do like talking to him. He said Pound Cake is a great friend of his. That's amazing. I didn't know that the two are, are you and McBoyfriend hanging out with Gaylord. <laughs> we're not. a little on the nose, isn't it? I mean, I'm just gay, and I call my boyfriend Lord when we're in the. <laughs> yes, Lord. <In> <laughs> yeah. Sire, like a vampire. Yeah. You were doing yesterday? People love the sire. Sire. Oh, they love it. But That's right. Uh, I think he feels a connection with me because I'm from his neck of the woods. Wellington is by Oberlin? Right underneath, yeah. That's oh, my it second is. home. I have my my aunt and my cousin lives in Why did I think Oberlin? I don't know. Well, I, I, I suck at geography. I was thinking Wellington was east. No, Wellington is south of Oberlin. It's yes. the it's the it's furthest Lorraine point, County, right? Southernmost point of Lorraine County. Yeah. Yes. Is that where the county fair is? Yes. Oh, okay. I mm-hmm. think I know where Wellington. Yep. I got an aunt and cousin in Wellington, family in all over Lorraine County. Lorraine, Elyria. I've had Bill makes every- a mean beef Wellington. We were talking about that last week. Quick. Was that born quick. there? Yeah. Was the dish yes, born in was, Wellington, Ohio? Yeah, it's not, it's a lot it's of not, beef not from, in Wellington. <laughs> it's not from uh, England. It's, it's not. It's, yeah. It's from Wellington, Ohio. Well, but there's no, I can't imagine, I'm going to go with that because I can't imagine there's any notable dishes from England. I mean, anything that has still stood the test of time, people go, oh, yeah, that's great. That doesn't come from, there's, there's no English food that's holding up that long. So I'm going to say that um, uh, Wellington, Ohio birthed uh, beef Wellington. I'm going to go with that. I'm cool with that. All right. Yeah. Oh, Wellington. Pound cakes, <laughs> second home. His first home, Oberlin. Mm-hmm. I thought your second home was at the University of Akron. No. Because you had so many memories there. You had so many good times there. That is, I lived there for five years, so that was the longest I've ever lived in a place. But uh, it, it's not my home. My home is where I grew up and where my heart is. Mm-hmm. It's ever my, wherever my mom lives. This is Wellington has one sister city. You know how cities will have sister cities yeah. around the world? And major cities will have dozens of sister cities. Wellington has one. It's Creef, Scotland in the UK is the one sister city of Wellington, Ohio. Hence the name of their dish, Beef Creef. Mm. <laughs> I, I guess the, the uh, <laughs> no, listen, you know, Beef Wellington. See, Wellington, Ohio sent them their recipe for their beef dish, and it became, over in the UK, Beef Creef. Not to be confused with the rapper Chief Keef, who uh, is awesome, but I don't know how good he is in the kitchen. I've got to take a break. If you want to send a text for something, 35192, alancoxshow.com is where the pictures will fly through the air. And we'll be back after these. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMM.